In the cosmos, one rock can change everything. It's like a nuclear explosion. Then comes the blast wave. This is the asteroid I'm really concerned about. Some call it the doomsday asteroid. Major asteroid strikes are going to happen. It's just a matter of time. So what would happen if a small asteroid or comet hit the Earth tomorrow? Something 100 to 150 feet across, like the one that made Meteor Crater in Arizona. Well, if we're lucky, it'll hit out in the ocean. We'll just make a big splash and pretty much that's it, it's gone. If we're unlucky, it's gonna hit a sizable city. And in that case, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. The first thing you're probably gonna notice is you'll have a second shadow because now there are two sources of illumination in the sky. One is the sun, and the second one is the fireball. The next thing you'll probably notice is it's getting hot as the fireball gets closer to you. When this asteroid hits the ground, from where you are, there's going to be a moment of silence, peace. But that's not going to last long, because then comes the blast wave. That's moving at about 700 miles per hour, and it's going to wipe out everything in its path. It'll demolish an area of a city, 16 blocks on a side. It's like a nuclear explosion. What will be left is a smoking crater a mile across. If you were 10 miles away from the blast, you might stand a chance of survival. But even then, there's fire and earthquakes. And that's not to mention the gas and the dust thrown up into the atmosphere. That's going to affect climate, health, even agriculture. And it's not just the impact on this one city. The effects will be global. Our civilization is very advanced, but it's also much more fragile than it used to be. Cities are interconnected, interdependent, and what affects one is going to affect all of them. Planetary scientists call these small to mid-sized asteroids city killers. Accurate, but a little cute, because we really should be calling them civilization killers. We really should be worrying about these things more than we do. Asteroid detection is an extension of our natural desire to protect ourselves. Now, the asteroids are really tiny, uh, looking at the whole scale of the solar system. And so what we'll be doing is looking at these points by their movement. This is a plot of the near-Earth asteroids we knew of 20 years ago, only a few hundred. Uh, 20 years later, now we know that there are over 20,000 near-Earth asteroids, and we continue to discover 40 more every week. The asteroids we're really concerned about are called potentially hazardous asteroids. These are at least 500 feet across. They are within four and a half million miles of Earth, and there are at least 2,000 of them that we already know about. This is the asteroid I'm really concerned about. It's called Apophis, or some call it the Doomsday Asteroid. And on April 13th, 2029, Friday the 13th, it's going to come within 20,000 miles of Earth. These blue dots are satellites orbiting the Earth, and Apophis will be closer to Earth than some satellites. It's clear that we're going to be safe when Apophis comes near Earth in 2029. But Apophis will be so close to Earth that it could get a kick from Earth's own gravity so that the next time it comes around in 2068, it could be on a collision course toward Earth. 
Identifying dangerous asteroids is just the first step in protecting the planet. Once we found them, we need to stop them from hitting Earth. We're going very fast. We're going at 15,000 miles an hour. We're going to the Didymos system. It's about 850 yards across and has a small moon orbiting it that is 175 yards wide, Dimorphos. We see the moon for the first time about 30 days out. And 30 days out, we only see the larger moon. And it is just one pixel. The spacecraft makes its own decisions and is going to say, oh, that was the big asteroid, and now I see the moon, and it's going to start guiding towards the moon. When we hit the asteroid, all of the debris is going to kick off, and that's actually what's going to give us an extra kick and propel the moon forward. It's a very small change, right? A half a millimeter per second, but half a millimeter is enough to change the orbit of the asteroid. You know, I worked in a lot of science missions in the past, and it's very hard to talk to the public about what is it that you do, right? You talk about magnetic fields or electrons, and people are like, I don't care. However, I think everybody can relate to the fact that we're going to, you know, possibly save humanity. But here's the bad news. A lot of asteroids, they slip through the system. So here's the thing. Despite years of searching, we know there are plenty of rocks out there that we haven't identified yet. Let's just look at the figures. You know, there's at least 9,000 rocks that we know that are out there that are bigger than 450 feet. But then there's at least another 15,000 that are out there that are smaller. And then there are the 150 foot size asteroids that the astronomers call the city killers. We haven't identified those at all. And so those, those known unknowns, those are the real threat. The first that anyone knew about the meteor that struck Chelyabinsk was when the fireball went screaming across the sky. And that meteor that the weather satellite saw over the Bering Sea, well, that was a surprise too. But then there are the objects that come right out of left field. In 2017, astronomers in Hawaii discovered a muamua. What made a Muamua special, it was the first time astronomers had ever seen a giant rock coming from outside of the solar system, from the distant stars. And the thing about it was, by the time they'd seen it, it was already halfway out of the solar system. And in 2019, we had another visitor from deep space, a comet named Borisov. And once again, its appearance in the solar system came as a complete surprise. These interstellar objects, they're real curveballs. They come in through the solar system on these crazy trajectories that are impossible to predict and at enormous speeds, not tens, but hundreds of thousands of miles per hour. That's faster than anything within our own solar system. Now, if one of these babies shows up and is on a collision course with Earth, well, we're not gonna know about it until it's way too late. Dinosaurs ruled the world for 160 million years, then gone, taken out by one rock. They didn't stand a chance. What about us? Major asteroid strikes are going to happen. They've happened throughout history. It's just a matter of time. It may not be in the next decade. It may not be in the next century. But over the course of millions of years, there's going to be an asteroid large enough to wipe out a lot of life on Earth. The odds of getting hit, say, in the next year are very low. But the problem is, if it happens, the damage is catastrophic. 
This is the one natural disaster that we have within our means to actually prevent. The challenge, though, is we've, we've got to start practicing. We should be able to develop the technologies that could perhaps break the asteroid apart or perhaps gently nudge it into a different orbit so it wouldn't strike the Earth. Could we survive an asteroid impact? Well, it depends on how big it is. Even if it's a pretty big fireball, that's not that big of a deal. But if it gets past a certain size and we let it through, yeah, this could be bad. It could hit a city, wipe it out. And we've seen what happens in situations like that in the past. These have a global impact economically and in many ways. So our best bet really is to make sure they do not happen. If it were to happen, life would probably go on. Maybe not with us, but it would probably go on. When we think about existential threats to human civilization, you know, we think about things like uh, um, terrorism or pandemics, or, you know, the very, very serious threat of climate change. But if we were gonna ask what could completely wipe out human civilization in an instant, well, that's really an asteroid. And that's really why we need to think about it more.